I didn't know this would be the last car ride with my little boy. I didn't know this would be the last time I saw him alive. It's the worst feeling in the world when you hug your child for the last time and they're ice cold. Well, charges have been filed against a Luna County Sheriff's Corporal after he crashed into a car carrying a mother and her 14 month old son. Police. Welcome back to We The People University. My name is Abaya Israel, former police officer and former sheriff's deputy. Um, today, unfortunately, we're going to take a look at the Luna County Sheriff's Office located in the state of New Mexico, where a Luna County, Luna County uh, Sheriff deputy um, speeding down the road, responding to a call and crashed into the side or T-bone into the side of a vehicle, killing a 14 month old child in the process. Um, going to share this video with you guys. Uh, it's a pretty sad video. It's going to share this video with you guys. And I'm actually going to give you a little bit of my experience on the police department in a situation, not quite like this, but, um, kind of relating to it. Let's look at this first and uh, we'll talk a little bit later. Well, charges have been filed against a Luna County Sheriff's Corporal after he crashed into a car carrying a mother and her 14 month old son. The mother survived, but the baby was killed. News 13's Jessica Garate has the parents reaction to the newly filed charges. Wyatt and I were headed home the day of the crash. I didn't know this would be the last car ride with my little boy. I didn't know this would be the last time I saw him alive. It's the worst feeling in the world when you hug your child for the last time and they're ice cold. The parents of Wyatt Franzoy talk about the day their 14-month-old son died nearly six months ago after Luna County Sheriff's Corporal Paul Garcia T-boned the family's car. Deputy Garcia conduct changed dozens of lives forever, none more so than Wyatt's parents. Isabella and William. Back in November, Corporal Garcia and an officer in training were responding to a robbery call in Deming and speeding down Highway 11, going 130 miles per hour. I never saw the sheriff's car speeding behind us. I remember slowing down before the intersection and turning and turning on my blinker. And then my life changed forever. A police report states Corporal Garcia moved into the opposing lane as Hernandez turned, hitting her car at 99 miles per hour. Unfortunately, there was an alleged glitch with Officer Garcia's dash cam video, making the footage of the actual impact unavailable. Hernandez suffered from numerous injuries, but her baby boy didn't survive. It's not fair. This Luna County officer gets to go home to his son. Meanwhile, if I want to see mine, I have to go to the cemetery. I visit Wyatt often and I usually go when they're about to close so I can read him his bedtime stories just like before. I, I still have the dirty diapers and bottles from that day before he was killed because I just can't seem to let go of anything. Corporal Garcia's case was sent to the Alamogordo DA's office, who filed charges for homicide by vehicle and great bodily injury by vehicle yesterday. Wyatt's parents are demanding justice. My first and only son was taken from our family because of a reckless and dangerous driver. Only two months after his first birthday. He didn't even make it to his second Christmas. I pray that no parent ever has to know the pain of returning Christmas gifts that were never put under the tree. Jessica got it, the KRQE News 13. Corporal Garcia has been in trouble before. He was convicted of driving drunk in 2015. The criminal complaint says he narrowly avoided hitting a Luna County officer and told them he had a previous DWI conviction in Texas. Last year, he was awarded the 2023 Deputy of the Year in Luna County. He's still employed by the Luna County Sheriff's Office. So the deputy Paul Garcia was speeding uh, down the road while training a uh, new deputy and while responding to a burglary call um they were driving at speeds of 130 miles per hour 
Now, the law doesn't dictate how fast a police officer can, you know, go when responding to a call, but sometimes a police department's policy can, you know, the department can say, Hey, listen, you can't go over a hundred miles per hour. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case in this situation, but it wasn't so much, uh, what it was his speed, but his recklessness. Now, as you heard the news clip state that he was already arrested and convicted for a DUI. This just goes to show that this guy was just completely reckless. First off, why is he training anyone? Secondly, you're driving at 130 miles per hour and you're obviously not paying attention. Um, should you have been going that fast to get to this call? Of course not. I want to read a little bit of this article. Um, it states, the law firm says Hernandez suffered fractures, the driver of the vehicle, um, the mother of the child. Um, she suffered fractures to her collarbone, pelvis, rib cage, wrist, liver, chat, bleeding from her liver and nerve damage in the crash. Her 14 month old son, obviously, as you guys know, did not survive the crash. Um, in her statement, I remember slowing down before the intersection and taking a turn. Um, the next thing I know, I was waking up in pain. Uh, Garcia, uh, has been in trouble before, as we heard in the clip, he was convicted of drunk driving in 2015. The criminal complaint says he narrowly avoided hitting a Luna County officer and told them that he had previous, previous DUI, DWI, uh, convictions. So, um, I know inside of the news clip that, you know, they say that he was arrested and it sounded like one time before for DWI here. It sounds as if, um, it was more than once. So I'm not quite sure, but we know for a fact it was at least once. Um, so why do police departments keep police officers who are obviously bad apples? Why do they keep them around? I guess I think we all know the answer to that question. You know, the lack of accountability. Investigate yourself. Find yourself not guilty. When I was working and I was actually a rookie, same situation as this rookie found himself while speeding down the road at 130 miles per hour. I, too, was on the passenger side of a vehicle, but I, we were responding to a fire. Um, well, a fire alarm. And my corporal who was training me was also driving at 110 miles per hour. Crazy thing was the roads were wet, you know. Um, now, as a rookie, I'll be honest with you guys, as a rookie, did I say, hey, stop, slow down. I'm going to report you to my, the higher ups. I did it. Should I have? Yes, I should have. And when I watched this video, it reminded me of that. And it made me regret not doing that because, okay, we didn't crash into anyone. We didn't kill anyone, but it was a possibility that could have happened. Um, why do we feel the need to speed like that? Mm, I don't know. I'll tell you one more thing um, before I end this video. Um, and I do understand that this is not the cocktail channels where I t what channel where, where I uh, tell the stories, but I'm just trying to relate and uh, give you guys a little bit of uh, the lens from my perspective. Um, one of the things that kept me from speeding like that was because it was one night, um, my tires, and I wasn't even speeding. They just wouldn't, they, they were not gripping the road. I was sliding and these seemed to be new tires. So I reported the situation to my, uh, my sergeant who told me to take it to the guy who actually fixes the cars, the mechanic outside. We had to sign it up, put on the sign-in sheet, turn it into him and yada, yada. So he told me that the tires are fine. These are new tires. But I'm like, yo, listen, my car is sliding across the road. They're not fine. I reported this three times. Um, every time, got the same report back. So at that point, I'm like, listen, if there's a call, yes, I'm going to get to the call, but I'm not speeding down the road because I'm not going to kill myself or someone else 
trying to get to a call that may not be that serious once we get there. Most calls are not that serious once we arrive on scene. Why do we speed down the road that way then? And I wanna stop saying, let me stop saying we because I'm no longer an officer. Why, and I, even when I was an officer, I wasn't speeding down the road. Why do police officers speed down the road like that? It's a rush. It's, it's just that adrenaline rush that you are allowed to speed down the road and there's no, there's no, uh, 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 there's no disciplinary actions for that. Even in my personal vehicle, I, I anyone who knows me knows I kind of drive very slow. Why? Because I like to like, I want my vehicle to last for a long time. I'm not a fast driver. I'm very lax. I drive slow and I drove the same way if I could in my police vehicle. Now, honestly, if I had to get there, I'm going to get there. But am I going to risk my life over or the life of someone in the public over getting to someone who stole a Snickers bar or something of that nature? Of course not. You know, we see if we do that, this is the result. I'm sorry for talking so long, but I just want to share a little bit of that. Um, these are the t these are the results of police officers who are not held accountable. This officer obviously had at least one DWI and probably several others, but yet he's still on the department and he's training a rookie. And then he goes out and not only injures a driver, but takes the life of her young child. This is policing in America. Always record the police, always know your rights. With that being said, we the People University, signing off.